be able to look at it uh, and watch it again later. This is exciting stuff. You're going to want to watch it multiple times, and we're excited to share uh, our information with you uh, today. As you can see on the screen right now, and please tell me if you can't see this screen, uh, but you should be able to see uh, just a few basic check marks uh, from the MACT Fall Conference. Uh, is your microphone on mute? Uh, please type your questions into the Zoom chat, and we have that up and rolling for you. And then also, if you feel comfortable, go ahead and turn your camera on. Uh, we always love seeing smiles, love seeing faces, but if you wanna remain uh, in the background, that is totally fine as well. So what we're here today to talk about is linking the NEE data network for educator effectiveness, uh, which I'll talk about here in a little, with program impact for CAPE accreditation. Uh, with me today is Cho and Xavier Lee. They are both members of our network for effectiveness research team. Uh, and I am Tom Hairston. I'm the managing director Network for Educator Effectiveness, uh, which again, I will be mentioning here in a little bit. As you have questions, as you need clarification on anything, again, please type that in the chat. Uh, we'll be around to answer those questions and get answers to you either in the moment or with you as the session ends and we have time to uh, check our emails. Today, what we're going to talk about is NEE and how NEE can help uh, with the CAPE accreditation process. Main goals for our session today, as you see on your screen, the NEE teaching observation process, the NEE rubric, uh, getting you familiar uh, with the Network for Educator Effectiveness, what's going on in our school districts, and then how to apply that school district data to support uh, your claims around meeting standard 4.2 for CAPE accreditation purposes. Then the third thing we're going to talk about today is how to provide disaggregated results of completer impacts by program and by year. Uh, so that's our three goals for today. I uh, look forward to sharing those with you. First, let me give you a little basis for the Network for Educator Effectiveness, or as it's called shorthand, NEE. Uh, developed in 2011, uh, Network for Educator Effectiveness is a partnership by researchers at the University of Missouri, as well as uh, PK-12 practitioners, uh, former practitioners as well. The goal was to provide a useful evaluation system, getting away from some of the bad evaluation processes, practices out there, and providing something more relevant for teaching, more relevant for school leadership with how can we move forward? How can we really assess the most practical pieces of teaching for our own independent uh, school district? Me involves multiple measures. Uh, one of the measures is a classroom observation process. This is the most frequently used uh, process by our school districts uh, throughout uh, the school year. Uh, and it is a systematic classroom uh, observation process of teaching practices, those teaching practices often determined at the district or at the school level. We do use uh, the in-task standards, the same standards as uh, the Missouri state teaching standards are based on as well. And so most of you should have a strong familiarity with those standards, uh, with uh, those indicators. Classroom observation is one of our pieces. Uh, but we have other measures as well, including a student survey of teaching practices uh, with that teaching survey of principal practices, uh, professional development plans, observation and evaluation measures for specialists as well. Speaking a little bit more on the classroom observation process, we do ask and recommend that each teacher inside of each building is observed four to 10 times per year at 10 minutes at a time. We also ask and recommend that those be unannounced. That gives us a really good framework for a, on a daily basis, what are those teaching practices that are occurring in the classroom? 
and how frequently are those occurring? One of the major components of our routes for classroom observations is based on the frequency of what's occurring within the classroom, the frequency of specific effective teaching practices, and how often uh, those are being utilized or with how many students uh, those are being utilized. NEE currently has 292 districts, uh, most of those coming from the state of Missouri, but we are also in Illinois, Nebraska, and Kansas with that as well. And so we are growing beyond uh, just a state level evaluation system into a more regional uh, evaluation system as well. Let me talk a little bit more about the classroom observation process. As I mentioned earlier, it is based on the NTAS standard, standards and modified by uh, the Missouri teaching standards. Uh, so uh, we worked really closely at the beginning with DESE to make sure everything was aligned and in fact shared numerous principles uh, that came to be uh, the Missouri model evaluation system and uh, what happens within NEE as well. We do recommend that schools or districts select two to six practices to focus on from among 27 observable teaching practices, those teaching practices that we really see the interaction between teacher and student during an actual observation in the classroom. Our rating scale for each rubric is on an eight point scale, uh, ranging from zero to seven with uh, the demarcation being anything from three or below is that teaching practice is occurring less than half the time or with less than half the students. And then anything five or above being more than half the time or occurring more uh, than half of the students. One of the other unique features of our evaluation system is that principals in any administrator, uh, district level or building level, uh, that is responsible for supervising or evaluating does have to go through an annual calibration training where we, again, recalibrate as a whole network, over 2,000 administrators, making sure that all of our evaluators are able to evaluate with accuracy and with precision. Now I'm going to hand it over to Sue Yin. She's going to talk a little bit more about how we tie NEE and CAPE together. So Sue Yin, you got the heavy lifting today. I'm going to get <laughs> and let you go. Thank you. Um, so CAPE, Council for the Accreditation of Educator Program and the Preparation. When we think about the accreditation, people uh, probably will not start with a like, happy face. They're like, oh, <laughs> because it just, we needed to uh, uh, produce a lot of evidence. We have how we are having the high quality teacher training programs. Uh, and it is so necessary to for the uh, P212 students learning and teacher quality, but uh, the work needed to be done is mountains. Uh, as Dr. Nodding went through and also some of the institution uh, us we did. Um, but uh, to, uh, this year, the MACT, uh, the title, the Rediscovering Joy in Teaching is very inspirational. So we can actually have that moment of the rediscovering the joy of accreditation in teaching. Uh, that's my goal today. So, um, CAPE is a peer review like uh, Dr. Nadine or clinical director of professors, uh, deans, uh, the, they become the evaluator uh, outside the visitor and then see the, all those evidence uh, to meet the five standard, the CAPE standard. And uh, five standard uh, content knowledge, clinical partnership and practice, and candidate quality, program impact, uh, and uh, continuous imp improvement. Standard four that we will focus today is a different standard compared to the other standard. Other four standards are the pre-teacher candidates during their teacher training programs. 
On the other hand, standard four is above uh, the is about the uh, quality of the teaching in class, okay, P to twelve students. So uh, there are four uh, the components under the uh, standard four. One is measuring the student learning, like using the test scores and uh, the you know the student uh, the examples assignments. But standard two is specifically about uh, high teaching effectiveness. So uh, in K, we EPP the teacher training programs needed to uh, provide evidence based claiming we are doing high quality uh, completer training. So when they go to uh, in class P to 12, they are effective in teaching. So the best evidence that uh, is required with the very rigorous instrument that can measure teaching effectiveness, knee comes in that point. He already has the, this uh, very rigorously tested with the high reliability and validity. So uh, it's very useful if you the EPP has that reliable tool uh, and have the uh, data uh, that uh, for EPP to use it to prove a high quality. And uh, Kate uh, asked to uh, two things. You will hear a lot about the three cycle data, three cycle data to show the trend over the time. And as well as they require comparison across the teacher certification areas or program areas. It depends on the institution. If you don't have the enough uh, numbers of cases, you can collapse uh, the, the certification area to meet into your teaching te uh, uh, training programs. I've seen small institution just dividing into the elementary and not elementary. That's possible. It's uh, all about the consistent reasoning. You have to speak to meet into your institution and then uh, stay with the reasoning and then provide the evidence to speak to what you are saying, claiming. Uh, so that's the standard uh, 4.2. That's what we will uh, focus today. Um, so uh, this first case that I will show you uh, across the several slides for a while is uh, number one university, large land grant university, uh, already has the lots of uh, teacher training, like, you know, the top five numbers of the uh, numbers of the teachers in entire Missouri state. And so it's more uh, easy, I guess, privilege the easier uh, to present the data evidence to meet the uh, CAPE requirement. So this university uh, presented the evidence that uh, completers teach effectively, uh, showing the wide range of the teaching skills, content, and disposition uh, across the uh, preparation programs using the need data. Um, and also, uh, we could use the uh, state uh, average as a benchmark. So compared to the, this College of Education, large uh, university, uh, completers to the uh, state average across the different teaching skill uh, indicators. And then as well, in addition to that, not only that, also within the institution, uh, they, they segregated the uh, uh, data across the programs like elementary, uh, English, language arts, secondary, middle school, high school, science, social studies, all those across the different certification areas, they could present uh, diagnosis and the analyze and then present the data to speak for their case. 
Yes. So this is the one of the evidence that is a very nice. Uh, it's a very one chart, kind of busy, but it has the all the summary in terms of the comparison of the, this college of education to outside uh, institution trained teachers uh, and benchmark comparison to the average state average. And uh, like for example, 1.1, 1 .1, uh, 1 1.2, uh, and 1.2, 1 uh, I think, is it, uh, I think it's, uh, so let's see. So 1.1 .1 is the uh, academic discipline, uh, the, the content knowledge. And then 1.2 is the cognitive engagement. And then going down to the 7.4, 7.4 is the formative assessment. So whether a teacher is monitoring the entire class as well as uh, the individual students. So it's the various uh, types of teaching skills indicators. And we uh, not only did the comparison to the state benchmark, but also on the left side, you can see the certification areas. Uh, so we compared uh, the across the certification area as well. Do you have any questions about this chart since we have a small numbers of attendees? Are you okay with this information? Okay. What, the, what notation? I, I was trying to figure out the notation for the different highlighted. Um, oh, yeah, it's a hidden map. So uh, like a higher score uh, shows the uh, more dense color. So um, you can, it's visually showing some more higher comparison to the weaker area. So uh, yes, you can highlight, you know, by the across the indicator, but I think we did that uh, this one by the uh, across the indicator. Yeah, I did that by the indicator. So if you see the like, for example, uh, 4.1 uh, for the language art, uh, it shows the more dense uh, greener color, meaning, uh, oh, language art, uh, that program, at the 4.1 is the most stronger uh, performance compared to the weaker, wider, lighter color. And so you can show uh, that visually. Is that your question? Was yeah, that? Yeah, well, because I, I was also thinking about um, having just attended a CAPE presentation uh -huh. about a week ago. I was mm. also thinking about the context of how this might be written in the narrative. And I was curious if um, the EPP had selected maybe a benchmark, you know, because that's what I was thinking about with the highlighted colors. And I was thinking about the comparison. Yeah, so uh, regular. there are two ways in here. You can compare for the like uh, middle school uh, language art, and then you can compare across the different indicators. So uh, the, that program did a stronger, a higher performance, stronger in uh, 4.1, uh, you know, uh, versus uh, compared to the 7.4. So we needed to find the program to improve that, uh, you know, the 7.4 is the, formative assessment, you know, the on-spot live teaching, uh, checking the whole class in addition to the individualized uh, teaching. So you can use the kind of to diagnose across the uh, teaching indicator, teaching skills for the program, but at the same time for the institution purpose, you can actually uh, make the heat map uh, across the program to actually diagnose the which program is compare, compared to the what program uh, weaker. So you can uh, compare across the your program, uh, like elementary to the secondary English uh, language art to the math uh, or K to 12, you know, those kind of way. It's about the what you wanna you wanna say. Right. One right. more question. Mm -hmm. um, do these scores represent the 10, the 10, uh, the four to 10 cycles per year? 
that Tom mentioned earlier about how you would use the instrument? Oh, uh, the, the yeah, these are, mm -hmm. Yeah, Tom? These are an overall average of all the observations. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in terms of the cycle, uh, in CAVE, since you are working on the CAVE, <laughs> so you need to um, make sure uh, presenting the three cycle data. So, so I'm in the cycles of the observations. So for the mm -hmm. knee, if you're doing it four to 10 times a year, I was trying to figure out if this was a one time or if this was an average across. Oh yeah, it's an average, yeah, right. Okay, so is there any more question about this chart? Okay, then. So this is a similar chart. It's just that this is a very fresh, this spring data. <laughs> so uh, we, I just wanted to uh, show you because this is a most recent but you can see it has a much less uh, uh, cases because it was the observation done pandemic time. Actually, our completers, actually uh, the APR 2019 to 2020, and then actually in class teaching during the uh, pandemic time. So I kind of wanted to sh uh, show you a little difference, you know, what happened during the pandemic time. So uh, we, uh, analyzed little fewer indicators that has the enough cases, but still we could see the uh, in, interesting informat information, especially particularly we paid attention to the uh, social emotional indicators like 5.1 uh, and 5.3. Those are the social, uh, pro-social, so 5.3 is the like, teacher encourage pro-social like kindness and uh, the classroom community uh, positive. Uh, so those are the things that we paid attention. And then this institution, large institution, actually completers did a, a good job. The teachers performed very well. So uh, we wrote about that case, uh, even in this uh, tough time of the pandemic. Uh, Ni continuously uh, did the teaching observation during the pandemic time. Uh, districts uh, had a little more uh, choices. Some districts uh, continuously did the uh, as uh, normal teaching observation, so three indicators in, per, uh, in class. Some districts uh, did the hybrid and uh, virtual in class combined. And some districts uh, did only uh, virtual. So there was a little variation. Not only that, some district chose only one indicator uh, because the circumstance was uh, difficult to do uh, any extra uh, activities. Um, Tom, do you have any other comments about the during uh, pandemic time, teaching observation? No, I just, I'm sure you all know um, what we saw within buildings, within classrooms uh, was just enormous grace under pressure uh, and really a strong commitment to students, a strong commitment to uh, continuing trying to achieve learning in all possible ways. And that was really refreshing to see. It was also refreshing to understand how administrators worked tirelessly to try to make last year especially easier on teachers and the willingness to put a pause on some of their bigger goals, on some of their bigger district projects, uh, to really focus on what they deemed to be most important, whether that was student-teacher relationships, which was by far the most observed indicator last year, um, into um, other indicators as well that was more focused on what needs to happen this year. Uh, so that was all really interesting to see across our network. Okay. 
Um, so uh, we did uh, not only just to, you know, using the summary chart, but also we did the little more deeper uh, on the, the, you know, is it difference across the program across the year? Is it really statistically meaningful difference? Uh, real uh, difference are there? Uh, in order to do that, uh, actually we ran uh, different family, different types of ANOVA because ANOVA does a very rigorous uh, the methodology to show the across the groups. So that's a real idea uh, methodology for this kind of a comparison across the program or with the uh, fixed effect of the year out, you know, those kind of things. So uh, we did uh, various types of ANOVAs um, for this uh, CAPE analysis. So uh, I became the fan of ANOVA <laughs> after the CAPE accreditation because I did so many, <laughs> but it works really well for a CAPE need. Uh, I will be happy to uh, talk about that later as you, uh, anyone, uh, Dr. Schneider or anyone, you know, go through the CAPE, uh, let me know. Uh, I will share my experience with you. So uh, here, uh, the one impact variable I use the program and another one year out. And then depend on the variables, I use the knee indicator score data the performance uh, on that I rendered very different model. And then uh, this is the, the you know, ANOVA model in a formula. And then uh, the interesting thing that I noticed from the uh, various uh, analysis is that the across the program difference, it's a very subtle. So some of the indicator, yes, there is a, a statistical difference, but most of the indicator, uh, there was no real uh, significant difference. But year out was consistently, most of the uh, indicators, uh, there was a, a statistically significant difference, especially for the first year. It's a pretty, we, you, some people may say, oh yeah, first year is difficult. But yet, uh, I think it, it carries a lot of uh, the lesson to the teacher training programs because uh, by as much as you improve before completer go out to the classroom, so they can actually, uh, doesn't have to hit the real hard button, you know, the real in class. So that was a, a resonated lesson that I've seen from the analysis. Yes, so here you can see that a program areas, uh, it's not significant. And then year out, it is uh, significant. And then uh, if you uh, see the other analysis output, it shows the which area is different. And then it's a one and two is the significantly different. And then between two, uh, the one and two, uh, uh, two, uh, two and three, uh, those are not uh, significantly different, but one and two, that is the uh, different area, the, the spot. And interaction was not significant. So if you look at just to, this is a good, uh, a good uh, summary visually showing the difference uh, by the across the program, which was not uh, significant, statistically significant, but yet we can see some subtle sort of change, the difference. K-12 performed better than actually like middle school uh, or high school and early childhood and elementary in middle. And, but if you look at the year out uh, at the bottom, that you can see that how, uh, hard, uh, difficult for the first year out uh, teachers. So it tells the, the uh, actually with this uh, output, the College of Education actually, and you, uh, we decided to, uh, you know, the, the professor's program, uh, professors will go out to observe the completer teaching 
to actually bring some information to improve the uh, program uh, to help before they graduate. Uh, we were very excited about that planning and then COVID got us, so <laughs> didn't happen, but hopefully uh, it can bring it, we can bring it bad energy. Okay. So this is another indicator, uh, 7.4. Uh, so the other one was the 1.2. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't say the cognitive, cognitive in, engagement. And then this one is the 7.4. Uh, the teacher monitor effects uh, of instruction on the whole classroom and uh, individual learning. So it's a formative assessment so they can on spot uh, really align the teaching uh, uh, difference uh, in the, during the teaching time. So I think the knee, uh, recommend all the, the districts to observe this indicator. They don't require, but uh, so actually this indicator has the solely the largest cases. So possibly your institution completers will have enough cases on those widely used indicators. So uh, that's a good thing um, when you use the data. So this one uh, shows also uh, same consistently first year out completers having a, a lower class score uh, compared to the other year out. And then in terms of the across the program difference, K to 12 performed higher and then uh, high school and middle school program performed lower compared to the other uh, level of the program. Do you have any questions so far? No? Okay. So um, number two, uh, we have a knee, uh, we share the data with the institution. Uh, comp uh, the compared to the first case, much smaller case. So it was a very smaller program. And also uh, actually, consistently yearly, it didn't actually perform higher than the actually state average. Then what can you do? You know what I mean? You cannot always just compare uh, to the benchmark state average, oh, we are higher because it is not the case. And you are not the only one if it is the case because there are many like 50 of the uh, percent of the institution cannot be higher, right? It's by the definition of the 50%. So you cannot ever, you know? So then what can you do? Is that uh, CAPE uh, really emphasize about the, you have to set your institutional goal. What is your institutional goal compared to the you are one year ago, two year ago, three year ago. And then you set the trajectory of your institution goal, program goal, and then continuously measure it, visit it, document it, and then uh, set uh, the, the examining where you are, you know, where did you meet your inst institutional program goal that you set. That is completely fine and actually, if you attend the CAPE, uh, the conference, you will hear that a lot. Actually, the CAPE, uh, the leaders, they emphasize on that. Uh, so you set your institutional goal and then measure it and then prove it and then provide the evidence to say your reasoning uh, rational to support your institutional commitment for the continuous improvement. So uh, this institution is the one that we recommended it that way because um, very, it was very tough on the last three years of the older data was not uh, higher than the state benchmark. And, um, but they are doing really wonderful thing in the institution. So uh, they can make a case with the evidence uh, Compare, comparing to the, your own institutional goals. So uh, in terms of the 
our this uh, the, in, in summary, what we are doing here is that focus on the continuous quality improvement of the uh, EPP program. That is the heart of the uh, this cake work standard accreditation, and then diagnose the strength, uh, the strength and weakness of your own program very critically, and then use the data to differentiate uh, the across the program and also across the years trend. Uh, that's very important. And then uh, faculties always bring that uh, information for their uh, program impro improvement. And what we learned uh, in this uh, need data analysis uh, across the indicators for that large institution was that uh, significantly, uh, these first year teachers uh, have, uh, having a hard time. And um, I think it's not just to, we cannot just to say uh, I'm moving on, it's a first year experience. I think uh, uh, institution uh, during uh, teacher training program uh, for the candidates, I think there is a, a room to improve. Uh, that clinical training and teacher training programs uh, to help out before uh, the candidates uh, uh, leave the institution to the, uh, the classroom. And also not only just for the improving the uh, institution uh, EPP programs, this information surely uh, invaluable to share with the schools and districts in order to help the, their own teacher growth. So um, it's, uh, the teachers, uh, the teaching effectiveness, this need data, the observing in class, uh, that data is a, a very, uh, it has a lot of uh, area that we can contribute for the, school improvements, teachers. So it's a, actually a very dynamic uh, process, the need data. Uh, so um, I hope we can rediscover the joy of accountability, <laughs> accreditation uh, for teaching. Yes. Um, is there any, uh, the, now uh, we are, you know, I think the main talk is over, so uh, we can have the you know the conversation. You know, if you have any question about this, uh. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Dr. Nadine's had a question in chat, uh, just mm. asking how the CAPE uh, team responded to the use of NEE data, uh -huh. the foundation for uh, Standard Four Point Two. We got perfect. <laughs> <laughs> they actually, uh, I think we were textbook uh, what Kev asked to do uh, because we religiously uh, did actually not only just elementary, secondary, for the cave, we desegregated by the certification area, everything. And then we provided and then uh, on the 10 case, we just marked the empty and then showed. Other than that, we submitted everything. Um, but uh, you don't need to do that though. Uh, we had a case, that's why we could do it. But uh, as I said, I've seen the institution pass cleanly with just lumping into the elementary and uh, not. Uh, that is possible too. It depends on um, your institution nature. Yeah, but anyway, we got, uh, you know, they loved uh, what we did. <laughs> Is there anyone else uh, the working on CAPE? Good luck to you. Let me know if you need any help. I was curious to see, um the knee itself. I looked at your website 
but actually looking, finding the tool, I found a place where there were social emotional indicators. Mm. I was looking specifically to see the list of indicators because I was curious mm. about the rationale, just thinking, I mean, you know, you're showing me a chart and you're mm. showing me, you know, now I want to know about the chart. I want to know about the data, um, which may be a part of this presentation or not. So you just tell me. Okay. Yeah. If you go, if you go to the College of Education, mm -hmm. uh, MU, uh, there is a indicator rubric. Okay. Yeah, uh, it has the analysis and also rubric as well. So for, each I, for the knee indicators. Uh huh. Yeah, I did upload the rubric, but if Tom has the rubric that uh, you can share it, but. Oh, Tom, you're muted, Tom. Gotta always has to happen one Zoom meeting, right? Uh, <laughs> for anyone interested in learning more about any E, the operational procedures, uh, more than happy to talk through that with you. Uh, just uh, shoot me an email um, and we can set up a time uh, to talk through the different components, how everything works, why our philosophy is set by uh, the way it is. All right, any other questions or anything else we could assist with? Thank you for joining. I uh, really appreciate uh, you all joining today uh, and learning about how me and CAPE accreditation can provide you uh, really strong data-driven results on uh, standard 4.2 uh, specifically. So as you have questions, you see our emails up there, uh, reach out more than happy uh, to discuss, to help as we can. I look forward to uh, conversations ahead. Thank you all very much.